Is later this morning, the food producer starting back in 1861 canning pork and beans. It now commands more than 12% of the U.S. canned food market, not to mention it's a company behind household brands like Chef Boyardee and Healthy Choice. But five years ago, the future of ConAgra didn't look so bright. Joining us now to talk about this is Mark Sunshine, the president and COO of First Capital, and Kevin Kerr, my friend, a senior commodities analyst at Resource Trader Alert. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, Mark, I'm going to jump with you real quick. What do you expect out of ConAgra later on today? You know, the, the estimate, I think, is 30 to 35 cents. And, you know, I, I don't have any reason to think that that's not really, uh, you know, on the money. But uh, one of the things about ConAgra that I think is great is this is a wonderful turnaround story with the new CEO having come in and, and basically gone back to basics and done the things that are blocking and tackling in business, pulling down some low-hanging fruit. And I think the future for that company looks pretty bright. Kevin, I got to go to you right away, man. Uh, corn prices off the charts. Uh, is this helping or hurting ConAgra? You know, Eric, when you and I started trading about 20 years ago or so, do you ever imagine we'd see $8 corn and $140 crude? I mean, it, it's incredible what we see going on. You know, ConAgra is faced with the same problem we all have, higher food costs. And they got to buy these products from the elevators and farmers and pass those costs on to you and I as consumers. they got the packaging costs with all the energy cost increases. This is a really tough putt, but I agree. I think Mark's right. I don't expect any surprises on the earnings. They've, they've pared back from their trading division. They've moved back into what they should be focusing on, uh, which the company is known for. And they've got some great brands, and they've really recovered. It is truly a recovery story. Uh, Mark, Kevin mentioned the trading activity. Uh, I think they sold off a, a division. Why would they sell off a division that was so profitable? You know, that, that, that division was essentially a large uh, uh, trading or hedge fund in trading commodities. And the CEO of the company um, decided... Bowling in New York, Eric. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. ConAgra reporting earnings later this morning. The food producer starting back in 1861 canning pork and beans. It now commands more than 12% of the U.S. canned food market. Not to mention, it's a company behind household brands like Chef Boyardee and Healthy Choice. But five years ago, the future of ConAgra didn't look so bright. Joining us now to talk about this is Mark Sunshine, the president and COO of First Capital. And Kevin Kerr, my friend, a senior commodities analyst at Resource Trader Alert. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, Mark, I'm going to jump with you real quick. What do you expect out of ConAgra later on today? You know, the, the estimate, I think, is 30 to 35 cents. And, you know, I, I, I don't have any reason to think that that's not really, uh, you know, on the money. But uh, one of the things about ConAgra that I think is great is this is a wonderful turnaround story with the new CEO having come in and, and basically gone back to basics and done the things that are blocking and tackling in business pulling down some low-hanging fruit, and I think the future for that company looks pretty bright. Kevin, i got to go to you right away, man. Uh, corn prices off the charts. Uh, is this helping or hurting ConAgra? You know, Eric, when you and I started trading about 20 years ago or so, do you ever imagine we'd see $8 corn and $140 crude? I mean, it, it's incredible what we see going on. You know, ConAgra is faced with the same problem we all have, higher food costs. And they got to buy these products from the elevators and farmers and pass those costs on to you and I as consumers. they got the packaging costs with all the energy cost increases. This is a really tough putt, but I agree. I think Mark's right. I don't expect any surprises on the earnings. They've, they've pared back from their trading division. They've moved back into what they should be focusing on, uh, which the company is known for. And they've got some great brands, and they've really recovered. It is truly a recovery story. Uh, Mark. Kevin mentioned the trading activity. Uh, I think they sold off a, a division. Why would they sell off a division that was so profitable? You know, that, that, that division was essentially a large uh, uh, trading or hedge fund in trading commodities. And the CEO of the company um, decided to focus on the core businesses of the company and get out of businesses that they didn't really understand or that he didn't really understand. Running an agricultural and commodity trading and hedging business and logistics business is much different from what the core of this company is, which is making food products. By the way, I, I should have said when you asked about uh, uh, earnings, they've had a little history of earnings surprises, slight earnings surprises, so they may beat estimate a little bit also. Kevin, I want to stay with the, uh, the spinning off that trading division. The company, that division made a ton of money for them. Um, I kind of disagree with Mark a little bit. They are probably one of the best in that buying, selling, and, and moving and transporting some of these commodities, why do you think they're selling this, this division off? 
Well, I, I think for the reasons Mark said, but I agree. It supported their quarterly earnings. It, it's been a big part of that. It, it's a little concerning that they're getting out of it. I, I do think that the management is trying to go back to their food and ingredients focus is what, you know, what their, their whole business has been about and, and getting away from what he's maybe not familiar with. It may end up uh, being a real bad move in, in some ways because they have been able to hedge and been able to be protecting themselves a little bit in these growing agriculture markets that are really uh, just cutting into the bottom line. All right, Mark, can they rely on those brands, Chef Boyardee, Healthy Choice, and the others to, to kind of keep their earnings moving forward, going, going forward? Yeah, you know, I, I think so. And they're getting a pretty decent price for this, this, uh, this division that they're selling. But let's remember, they didn't get a lot of credit in their, in their earnings multiple for the earnings that were coming off of commodities trading. And I think we could look at another company that had a bad announcement or some, some bad news in the press over, overnight, which is GE. GE is an industrial company, decided to get really big in financial services, didn't necessarily completely understand what they're doing, and now is trying to sell off their private label credit card company. Can't do it. Right. All right, listen, this is a good anticipation. I don't want to talk about GE. I want to, I want to stay with ConAgra. I want to but, stay with the foods. Wait, but I think ConAgra wait, I to, learned the lesson. I want, I want to go to Kevin. Kevin, the other companies in the space, the General Mills, are they going to see whatever ConAgra reports say? You think the same spillover will be in those companies? Yeah, I think, you know, this we're seeing a shakeout, Eric, and we've seen this in every industry. You know, the airlines, we're seeing it in other industries as well. As costs go up, we're going to see consolidation, we're going to see spinoffs, we're going to see them getting rid of the dead weight. And I think the companies that survive this, this increase in commodity prices are going to be the ones that get smart and, and stay lean, but also can innovate and create new focus on product innovation. And, and of course, ConAgra has some great brands. They had a little bump last year with P Peter Pan and Banquet with the Salmonella scare. But, you know, that's going to happen. Those brands are very well known. And I think they got through it better than some companies will. You know, companies that have just one brand and it gets damaged by something like that, they may not recover. But I think ConAgra can. Mark, spinning off the division, new management in place, is this a company we want to own going forward? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I don't own the company right now. And I don't know if the stocks can go up or down in the short term. You know, that's, we have other people who are experts who are on, on right now. But I, I'm going to buy today. You're going to buy it today? Yeah, I actually am. After the, after the number? Yeah. I think long term. Good or bad? Long term management's making the right moves. I, I like the story. I like that. Hey, Kevin, uh, is, is ConAgra calling a top in commodities by selling that very profitable division? I'm, I'm, I'm hawking in on this because I really, I, I, for the life of me, I can't figure out why they would sell the, their most profitable, profitable division. Are they calling the top? Are they saying that maybe, maybe this thing has run its course? I don't think so, Eric. I mean, I, I have to believe that some of these agriculturals were seeing a top, but, uh, you know, I don't think they're doing that. Again, I think it is a comfort level zone with the current management. They're thinking, look, we don't really understand this side of the business, and uh, we'll just get rid of it and focus on what we know best. I think it's kind of short-sighted. I'm not sure of the reason why. We'd have to ask them, but uh, I think it's just cost-cutting and trying to stay lean and mean and, and just not comfort. It's a comfort level thing. I think it's kind of a mistake. All right, great. Great stuff, guys. Mark's going to buy it. Kevin thinks it's a mistake to spin off that division. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Eric. All right, coming up, YouTube.